sure our kids have built-in advantages, especially the guys that are on scholarship. They have tutors, they have meals, they obviously get their school paid for, but they're also against the against it a little bit, and that's the normal student, the good student, has the opportunity to have internships. There's time, and we've tried to do that in the past, and unfortunately, everyone's requesting 12 to 16 week internships. There's not a window of opportunity for our guys to do that. So our May master, we took and we've done many internships, three to four week internships. J.P. Morgan Chase is going to work with us and put together one uh, next year. We're hoping to get that done, uh, specifically for OSU football players, uh, so they can fit that uh, mini internship in there. Because uh, the two things that employers look for are community service and job experience, and our guys get a plenty of community service, but they don't get the job experience. And so the amount of effort and time uh, that Ryan Stamper, our staff, myself, have put into the securing these opportunities for our players is endless. And that's it's about as good a feeling as you can have to, to see guys get opportunities because of this program. And then finally, today is the culmination. We have uh, John McConnell coming in to visit with our team. Uh, we uh, have had the selected speakers throughout. Uh, all the way from Jamie Dimon and also the culmination today is going to be John McConnell and some great speakers in between. Uh, I think we should get a list of those guys. It was Cameron Mitchell, it was George Kaufman, Mike Andrews. So we had some really good speakers along our journey. journey. And everybody gets a shirt and tie, gets cleaned up. The barber was in the last couple of days and they look good and they're going to, uh, their net, uh, the networking officially begins for some of those guys today, including the freshmen. <laughs> And they have a nice leather folder they go over, they collect business cards. We have our kids on LinkedIn so they can start the network process and then uh, we go with it. I had a meeting with each player after spring ball and we didn't talk football at all. We all talked about uh, our five-year plan, 10-year plan and how we're going to get there. And then they're going to take notes. And this is all on their iPads that we provide them. And then uh, after this job fair, I'm going to meet with each one individually again and they're going to take notes from what they experienced today. So obviously we're not just talking about it. This is uh, a lot of effort gone into this. Open up with, for questions, Steve. Yeah, Coach. Just in regards to this program, uh, sounds like this is something you guys have been ramping up and adding more to each Every year. year yeah. And just uh, have you seen some real life examples of guys who've benefited from the first parts of this the last year or two? You know, the guys that don't get drafted, they need to go right into the work. Well, we, now we're able to have testimony. You know, I always use the word theory or testimony. Zach Domicone, for example, came in and spoke to our guys about he benefited, he got a job out of this program. And he gives them real life experience. You know, I know Corey Lindsley is playing the NFL, but he came in and spoke this year. So we always get a former player to come in and give them uh, the benefits of, of what this program has done. So the answer is yes. We Obviously, the first year we weren't able to because it was a uh, charter program. We just started it. So now to see guys benefit from it, Josh Perry has had plenty of opportunities he's going to have just because of this program and who he is, obviously. I want to follow up just in terms of Braxton Miller and let's say Tyvis Powell, guys who graduated, what are the rules pertaining to what they have to do to be able to participate during this May period and then during the summer? And I presume they have to be in class to play in the fall. Just what are, what are the rules regarding that and, and what is maybe in particular, Braxton's status as a student right now at the university. Two things you can do. One is uh, take graduate school courses like uh, Daryl Baldwin has done. Uh, I think Tyvis might be doing that. I don't want to. We, we can get that to him. So the kids that have graduated, Braxton has not. He's taken a very light load to eligible to stay eligible. Uh, yeah, because he has so much rehab to do that for him to work on a master's degree. We, we sat down and discussed it, and he made. The, we both made the decision that's probably not in his best interest because of the time he has to spend on rehab. So each one's different, but you can either continue taking courses like a second major, mm -hmm. or you can uh, start graduate work. Dave. Coach, you know it's unrealistic. Do you think most players, when they come to a place like Ohio State, especially a place like Ohio State, think that they're going to be NFL players? Most freshmen, when they get here, do they think they're going to be NFL players? I bet it's 100%. <laughs> I yeah. bet 100% of scholarship players who come to Ohio State, uh, top 10 places, think they're going. And how do you balance that in recruiting? Obviously, wanting to sell that Ohio State's a great place to get to the NFL and prove it. With well, you have to. You have to uh, sell that because the minute you say, well, that's not what we do. And, and we're very proud. It's, there used to be a stigma, and I, I, I get kind of upset when I hear that. Well, you know, don't, always, don't just think about the NFL. 
it's like telling a great artist, don't just think about being an artist. Don't you know, a great musician, don't don't just think about becoming a musician. Absolutely think about it. Now, however, don't let that get in the way of your plan B, we call it. And your plan B is if something happens where you don't, if you can't live the, the rest of your life because of what you earned in football, which is the majority of people that play the game. Uh, Ryan, do you ever, like when you see Josh Perry get a job offer last summer, for example, do, do you learn things about the players from how they go through this, and does that factor into things you know, going forward, like captaincy and just absolutely, general things like absolutely, that? yeah. You, uh, I'm going to learn a lot about our guys today. Um, well, unfortunately, no, fortunately, I'm missing today. First one I've ever missed. But Nate Myers got a regional championship to play in Dayton, Ohio. Nice. <laughs> so, first one I'm going to miss. But uh, absolutely, I learned so much about our players. And and uh, whether they'll be captain, whether they'll be representing the Big Ten at media days, all the all the above. Far left, Lord. Along those lines, are there transferable skills that they're picking up in this program that they apply to football? Do they approach maybe football more professionally or? Is there any benefit from a football standpoint for this? Well, I think it's all tied together, but we have on purpose. Uh, sometimes we'll have agent education as part of this as well. Uh, we'll have that was Corey Lindsay. A big a part of his message was to have the misunderstanding that you know to have him. He actually went through a paycheck. When you pay your taxes, when you pay your agent, when you pay this, you're going to find out that everybody tells you that it's not that. It's not the Aaron Rodgers contract. It's the typical rookie contract, you know, and I think that's good that everybody understands that this, this plan B is real important because even if you play five, six years, you're going to have to work for another 35, 40 years. How much can you make that a part of your re recruiting pitch, though, Urban? Because I don't imagine a high school young man wants to imagine that they'll ever have to deal with real life, let alone prepare for it. I, I think that's changed a little bit. I think that there's been so much uh, emphasis and education on that. And the, usually the ones we deal with, plan B is a big part of it. You sit with the mom and dad, and mom and dads get it. And maybe an 18 or 17 year old thinks this, but I, it's been it's been a it's been a hit, obviously, recruiting as well. If 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 someone recruited my daughter and told us, or Nate coming up the ranks, say we do this for you, I'm shaking her hand and saying that's where you're going. And that's why we're real proud of it. Good luck to me. Yeah. In the region. Tim. Yeah, but if you were Bowling Green, I'm wondering, would you have this, the same response from like uh, big time uh, industry, et cetera, like you have here and stuff? But is that taking advantage also of y'all status as Ohio State? You know, national, I mean, do you find companies wanting to be part of it? Over the top. Over the top. And, and, and they, here's what they're telling me corporate America, and I could single out a few, but many guys said, who does not want to hire a guy that knows about selflessness, being part of a team, commitment, time management? And more importantly, solving issues in front of 30 million people on television playing Oregon or whatever the millions it was, or 110,000. You know, they get our guys go to work every day in front of 110,000 people. Everybody wants to hire those guys. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think people have done a great job getting those guys in front of corporate America. We have, and now it's over the top. Corporate America, here's our built-in advantage, and I've tried this other places. Corporate America is two miles away. You know, sometimes your corporate America is two and a half, three hours away, and it's hard to get them here or get them to be a part of it. And when you start talking about shadow opportunities, intern opportunities, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase what, and Huntington and some what, what these people mean to this community, and they want Ohio State people, the right people. Yeah. And that's not everybody. That's the other thing that, the, you know, the guys that are, you know, the, the, the not very disciplined human beings, we don't have to worry about shadow opportunities because you're not doing it. But the, the real guys that handle their business, yeah, throwing it. We'll buy you the shirt, we'll buy you the tie and the jacket, and we'll even get you there. You touched on it, I'm going to ask you. Uh, you talked about your son getting to watch him sing up in football last year, last fall, uh, at, at the, your coach's convention, and watching him now. What, what, what is this? I'm not getting into your the new year of admire, but what is it like to see your son sort of following in your footsteps? But uh, on a team that's excelling, what does it mean to you? Well, you know, I've been lucky that that all three of my children have been really well coached. We have a great baseball coach, a great team. Uh, he's learning incredible life lessons because I watch more of that than just winning games. I mean, I love yeah. watching him win, but I want him to uh, 
learn the great lessons that athletics teach, and it's been phenomenal. So, real emotional to watch him, to see him get. You know, I get more damn nervous than he does. I'm sure at those games. He had a backhand. We're having no hitter going. He gets a backhand, and I was like, oh, and he made the play, and you're like, oh my god. So it's just I'm living a dream, man. To see to see him do that. Yeah. I can't think of anything better. Bill. Can I ask you a football question? Has, has Braxton started throwing? Where is he in the He's throwing. Oh, no, no. He started throwing. Uh, I think he's up to 35 yards. Uh, they're monitoring it very closely. He's very aggressive, up to 25, I'd say, right now. We can't be out there watching, but our strength coach is out there, and he's got good zip on the ball. He's working his tail off. He's in the best shape he's ever been in his life. If y'all know if you've seen him, he's, he's kind of tight. You know, he's lost a little bit of weight. He's real muscular. I mean, he's done a great job. How confident are you, you can't know for sure, you thought this time last year he was in good shape, but how confident are you that he physically will be able to do the job? Oh, very confident. Uh, next week we'll actually be able to be with him without a ball. So it's called discretionary. These first three weeks they were back in the main master. They had, it's called discretionary time and that we can't be with them. Uh, it's all voluntary time, which is they've done a very good job with that. Next week it's mandatory for one week. We get to go do, uh, I think it's two hours a week. We're going to go out and work with them a little bit. And then they get a week off. And I'm planning when he gets back. Um, no, we can't be out there once again when he's throwing the ball. But. And you're confident. I mean, you know he's coming back now. I mean, what, what, what coming has he back. told you straight up he's going to be with you? Yes. Yeah. 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 What do you make of all the speculation out there, all the I really didn't. My wife pays attention. I don't know that. I don't. It's just people talking, I guess. I don't know. I mean, everybody can. I don't want to look like a clown. All of a sudden, he makes a decision to do something. But I mean, he's coming. He's playing for Ohio State next fall. I don't know where that even. I don't know where that comes from. Clay, go. Uh, one thing on the your son. As a former pro baseball player, I mean, has he come to you or are there little things in the infield that, I mean, you know what I mean, that you can't just, hey, let me help you here a little bit? Yeah, I'm funny about that because, you know, I don't want to be that guy that's overbearing. Uh, he'll will, he'll ask, and I'll throw my two cents if I see something. But he's been very well coached to this point, and he's, he's doing great. So. Is there a contention? Much better player than his dad, by the way. Really? Yeah, <laughs> you, you got a future? <laughs> Is there a contingency plan for Braxton that he can't be a quarterback? Oh, uh, great question. I'm not, I, I, Have you discussed him playing another position? No. He's good at QB. No, the, the, the objective is to get him healthy and to uh, and, and get him healthy to be, be a quarterback at Ohio State. Right, we're going to get ready and close. But Tim, I, you had asked me about, uh, you had given me that one question about you uh, coaching that and tonight and getting the freshmen to buy in and to realize that hey football could be over you know the plan b do you mind just no, I, I, yeah I, but yeah I, I forget what questions i'm asking sometimes but i want uh <laughs> <laughs> do you find these guys go through a little osmosis or a transition to where they understand uh from what you said coming in everybody wants to be an nfl player that they understand through this program that there are other things you need to be taken care of well, here's a great example. Every kid, not every kid, a majority of our players, what do you want to do? I want to be in business. Okay, let's go with that a little bit. What does that mean? And, and I'm embarrassed to say I wasn't quite aware what that meant when we first started this program. And business, you got so many opportunities to go in whatever direction you want. You want to be in law enforcement. It's endless what you can do. You want to be in sports administration. It's Nowadays, it's endless what you can do. So it's our job to expose them. So if you're sitting in the back room as a freshman, you say, I want to be in business. We've had people from financial planning, entrepreneurs, sales, marketing, all those people come in, tell them what a, your career path is, tell them what a day in the life of what you do is. And the kid might say, that sucks. I don't want to do that. Or that's very appealing to me. And then they start migrating to those people. And so when you walk into job fair tonight, the way Ryan has it set up, each room has got the different so they go to the, where they're interested, and that's when you start collecting business cards. Next week, we'll actually take a team meeting and make them sure they'll LinkedIn and email the people they met. So now the official network process has begun. So it's really cool. I mean, once again, I didn't. No one did. We didn't have this when I was a young person. So I, you didn't really know how many kids know what they want to do. Right. And so it's our job, and that's where I think colleges have failed a little bit. Not just 
I can't speak for like the engineering department or business department. I'm not sure universities have done a very good job with that, exposing them to different careers. And once again, if you're a corporate America, who does not want to hire that 3.5 student that's a football player at any university? You know, whether it be Bowling Green, Miami, Cincinnati, or Ohio State, who doesn't want to hire that guy? They have leadership skills, they have time management skills, they understand about being selfless. The great ones, I mean, the, the ones that get it. Not, not, not all of them, but those. And that's our job to expose them to these companies. Coach, thank you. Thanks, guys.